Yes? What can I do for you? Sorry to bust in. There was no girl out there. She's out to lunch. It's just as well. Hey? Skip it. Do you mind telling me what you want here, Mr... Blake. Steve Blake. Well, you have got a good view of police headquarters from here. Well, I'm aware of that. There's a possibility that you'll have to defend me on a murder charge, Mr. Bennett. Possibility? You mean you've actually killed someone? No, not yet. But if the police let him go... Mr. Blake, are you quite sure you know what you're doing? Across the street in the police station are two people. One of them is Mark Harper. Mark Harper? The owner of the Harper Diamond Mine? Yeah. The other is a girl. She means a lot to me. I love her and I intend to marry her. Right now, both she and Harper are being held for murder. They're different murders, but each hinges on the other. But I don't understand. You will. Uh, why did you come here? Why did you select me as your attorney? You don't know me. No. But that window is very handy, Mr. Bennett. I can get a perfect shot at Harper from it. But, Mr. Blake, I cannot allow you to do this. You can't take the law into your own hands. I might have to. And I might not. Depending on whether Harper or most of the street. Uh, Mr. Blake, it's not a lawyer, but a doctor you need. You are out of your mind, you know. <laughs> Relax, Mr. Bennett. Maybe you better hear the whole story since you may have to defend me. I will not defend you, Mr. Blake. Maybe the story will change your mind. You better listen. It all started when I had my first date with a girl named Clarissa. Stranger in town. Well, she was lonely and I was obliging. And she was getting less lonely every minute, but uh, suddenly there was a knock on the door. Someone knocking? Must be a woodpecker. like that in Africa. Uh-uh. I used to play trombone in the school band. I was just giving you the first 32 bars of the William Tell Overture. We'll play the next 32, baby. You know, I know what made William Tell. I could go on like this forever. It's heaven, darling. I can almost hear the angels. What's the idea not answering the door? They almost sound like a friend of mine. Look, Steve, we got a job. Finding a girl like you in Africa is a miracle. We gotta go up to the Kenya country. Do you really love me, Steve? Honey, there just aren't any other women in the world. The smell of your hair, those sweet lips. We're gonna get 2,500 bucks. Your shoulders, so what? 2,500. That's all, baby. Continue next week. But I thought you loved me. Hold everything, baby. We get back and then we'll make up for lost time. Hey, what's the deal? Where do we go and when do we collect? Well, I don't know what the deal is, but we go to the Harper Diamond Mine up near the Koali Ranch. There's cash on the line when we deliver our bodies into prison. This is a fine date. Well, don't be sore, babe. I'll bring you back a shrunken head from one of the cannibal tribes. A shrunken head? Sure. So you'll have somebody to talk to when Blake ain't around. The next morning, Coastal Air Transport Incorporated, that's Hoppy and myself, was airborne. We'd flown over plenty of strange places, but this was our maiden voyage into the deep interior where the Koali rain shot up into the sky. The Congo is bad enough, but the reports were that the Koali district made it look like a children's playground. It was way off the route of regular business traffic, and not many white men had ever penetrated that far. I don't think they missed much, either. We know about this guy, Harper. A lot of things. The first is he's got a million bucks. That's enough. I don't have to know anymore. Hey, what are we supposed to do with this 2,500 bucks? Since when are you particular? Okay, forget it. Hey, uh, where do we land? On the plane near the mine. There'll be a car waiting to take us to Harper's house. Uh, hey, let me see the map, will you? Here it is. This is going to be like a vacation. Maybe this job will keep your mind on your work for a while. <laughs> There's the mine. What? Oh. Well, hold on to your store teeth. Here we go.
What's the idea of the armed guard? You got a war going on down here? There's still plenty of wild natives back in the old. We have to take precautions. Don't they like Harper and his mine? Look, if you like, you won't ask too many questions. Just do as you're told. Wait on the terrace. Vacation, huh? Well, uh, <laughs> well the trip was nice. Try. Like what you see? Wearing your rubber sole shoes again, Mark? Next time, I'll end it with a fanfare of trumpets. Smart, aren't you? Yes, I'm smart enough to keep my eye on my wife when there's a handsome stranger about. Oh, I'd hate to be in your boots. You can't trust anyone. You love me, and you don't trust me. <laughs> That's right. I don't think Blake will be here long enough to worry me. It might be best if you'd leave us alone after you meet Blake. As you wish, Mark. Don't mean to butt in, Harper. They're outside. Yes, I know. Send them in. All right. This way. Steve, darling, so good to see you again. Hello, Connie. Oh, no. Not out here in the middle of darkest Africa. You old friends? Oh, we met. It was years ago. Why didn't you tell me that you'd met Blake? You didn't ask me, darling. How long has it been, Steve? Oh, five years, I guess. That should make it all right, then, dear. We've only been married four. I hope you don't mind, Harper, but I'd like to get down to business. We didn't come out here for the joyride. Well, that suits me admirably. I'm glad we see eye to eye. Apparently, I must leave. We'll have a long talk about old times, Steve. Oh, I don't think you'll be here that long, Mrs. Harper. Well, I'm certainly glad to have met you. I wasn't aware that we had met. <laughs> Well, only goes to show you. Certainly a small world, huh? I won't waste time on preliminaries, Blake. I have a map here that shows about 200 square miles of the territory surrounding Kowali Range. Most of it's dense jungle. It's too dense. There's a native tribe in there. We can't locate them. Are they giving you trouble? Oh, minor attacks, but they constitute a nuisance. They hamper our operations here. Have you notified the district commissioner? Yes, I've thought of that, but I don't want war with the natives. I feel that if I could locate them, I might make peace for them. I don't know what they've got against me. I've never done anything to them. You know, natives get funny ideas sometimes. Yeah. You want us to locate the village for you, is that it? Yes, yes, we've tried and failed. I think you can do it from the air. It shouldn't take you more than a day or two. Sounds all right to me, Steve. When do we get paid? You get half now on the balance when you bring me the information that I want. The deal? Well, that's fine. You can start first thing in the morning. Oh, uh, what about gas? We have plenty. One of the... Come on, Harvey. Looks like we're on the right track now, Burger. I only hope Blake doesn't get too curious. Well, why should he? You find the village, get his money, and leave. What about your wife? What about her? She knows about us. She seems to have been pretty friendly with Blake. Well, don't you worry about Connie. She'd be afraid to tell Blake anything. Uh, I hope so. Ah, brother. What a meal. The only thing missing was the finger bowl. <laughs> but I don't mind. I'm a lousy bowler anyway. Hey, what's eating you? Did you lose a telephone number or something? Hmm? Oh, no, no. I was just thinking. Yeah, you're thinking. You're thinking about that Mrs. Harper. You know, she paid more attention to you at dinner tonight than she did the food. And I don't think that Mr. Harper liked it for a minute. Temper. Stevie boy. Please remember that 2,500 beautiful pieces of lettuce are almost ours. Nobody knows that any better than I do. I need it more, either. Hoppy, do you ever recall an incident where a white man didn't report a native uprising to the district commissioner? Can't say that I did. But I don't get around much, you know. Harper, with a snap of his fingers, could have a whole contingent of colonials down here right away. He's senseless. Oh, brother. Here we go, Dan. Why don't you forget those? You know, Harper might have wanted to look at an error. Uh, maybe you just plain don't like the colonial. <laughs> don't get excited, Junior. We'll both get a good night's sleep, and then tomorrow we'll be off about our business. That's for me. I'm ready. Well, you coming? Oh, yeah, I'll be up in a minute. I'm going over to the mine, Connie. I'll be back as soon as I can. I'm going to bed as soon as I can. Please don't make any noise if you get back late. 
I have some questions I'd like to ask you, but I guess they'll keep. Pleasant dreams, dear. Thank you. You must tell me about all of your old friends sometime. What's the idea? Trying to get your husband jealous enough to blow my brains out? He had to go over the mine. He'll be gone for an hour. Well, it was fun while it lasted, wasn't it, Steve? It always is. Sure. It always is. I've often thought about us. We clicked. You're married now. And not bad, either. You must be worth millions. And not even a five and ten cent store around to spend it in. You know how much I'll be worth when he pays me the 2,500 bucks? No. 2,500 bucks and 47 cents. And a million dollars worth of freedom. Oh, Steve, I want to get out of here. I've got to get out of here. I don't love him and I hate this house and the mine and the jungle. Oh, Steve, get me out of here. You can do it. Oh, you got me wrong, Connie. I'll do almost anything, but I won't take another man's wife. Forget it. Steve. I said forget it. Steve. Yeah? Do you know why my husband wants you to find that village? Why? Oh, nothing. Say, wait a minute. I'm married now, and not bad either. Good night. What's the matter with you? You haven't said a word all morning. What do you expect me to say? Well, we could talk about the weather, or the money we haven't got, or women. Or... Hey, that's a dance. You got that Connie on your mind. I got nothing on my mind but collecting that dough, locating that village, and getting back to Sonobi. Whatever else is going through that alleged brain of yours is... Shot. The mag? Are you kidding? If I'd have known you were gonna crack this crate up, I'd have worn my old clothes. I can't reach that plateau we just passed. You better do some fast practicing on a hop. From here on in, we're practically a glider. Don't bother me. Just praying we don't go into a spin. You better pray a little harder and a little faster. I don't feel any different than I did before. What's the matter? You break something? No, I just feel to see if I had wings. Oh. How about you? I don't think I'd get wings in any case. Come on, let's see what the damage is.
your fan. It's the mags, all right. Have a buck, Hardman? What, is that the way you get rid of lions? No, I... Who? Just don't make a noise like something to eat. They go away and leave us alone. They may go away. Uh, aren't you sure? No, I guarantee just ran out. Look, you better get the rifle, though, just in case. found a meal somewhere else. <laughs> well, just hope you don't come around here looking for dessert. Uh, Steve! That lion's back at his throwing spears. Hey, Hoppy. Easy. Oh, that's just a jungle calling card. Well, let's get out of here. I don't want to accept the invitation. No, it wouldn't do any good to run. They're probably watching every move we make. We yeah. may as well stay right here in the open. Now I know how a dummy feels in the store window. Stay close. Don't worry. Like I said, our first customer. without it. We wouldn't have a chance. Maybe they won't get rough if we don't even drop it. I don't think he likes us, Steve. Lakbama! Donoku! Samba! Aluma! I thought I knew most of these tribal languages. This is a new one on me. Saku. They tied us up and pushed us around as if we were nothing more than cattle. But I wouldn't have done any good to get sore. And those spears are plenty deadly when they're used right. And then they led us off into the jungle. It didn't dawn on me until we reached the village how much of a spot we were in. Then I suddenly realized that this must be the place that Papa was looking for. If Papa was having trouble with his tribe, they weren't going to like any other white men who might be snooping around. The natives looked like they meant business. But apparently they never did anything rash until they talked it over with the chief first. I knew that this must be his hut. Mila! Apparently this Mila was the chief. We waited for a minute that seemed like a year. And then the grass door of that big hut opened. I don't believe it. That makes two of us. This is fantastic. What can a white girl be doing here? It's amazing. No matter where you go, there's dames. That's one word I know. It means kill. Come on, Leela. Call me why. Harper? He thinks you're Harper. I'm not Harper, bud. No, say. Marcus Chicoma. Now I get it. You must be a mind reader. Yeah. The Chinese always say, one picture is worth a thousand words. <laughs> I doubt if the old boy ever got to China, but he had plenty of good common sense. Well, I was supposed to draw pictures showing who we were and where we came from. Now, I'm no Rembrandt, but that much I could do. He also seemed to have control over that blonde package of TNT, which was okay with me. Oh, that baby was dangerous. way I could, I, I tried to explain that we had flown the plane from a coast town, the Shinobi, and that we were on our way south when we had to land. 
know, I couldn't take a chance on telling them that we were working for Harper. <laughs> That'd probably mean our next. Madonna! Platoon is away! Something tells me you should have gone to art school, Junior. <laughs> Not for us. That's war paint on those men. What I'm trying to figure out, though, is that girl. Now, what's she doing here? Where'd she come from? What's she got to do with Parker? There's me. You saw that locket she was wearing. Yeah. Yeah, that's another thing. The locket. Could have swiped it. No. Oh, no, I don't. There's something strange going on here, Hoppy. Harper knows a lot when he told us. been cooped up in this rat hole for days. How long is it going to be before we get out of here? Ah! Don't give me any of that double talk. Save your breath. What this place needs is an information desk. Hey, that ain't bad. What is it? Tender snake meat. Well, there's one thing you got to give these natives credit for. They certainly know how to... <laughs> snake meat. Oh, so they're trying to poison us now. Well, what's the matter, Hoppy? The snake's dead. How do you know? Can you trust the snake? Well, at any rate, you can... Hoppy, look. It didn't take much to figure out what had happened. The natives had attacked Harper and come off second best as usual. Only this time they'd taken a worse beat. Several of their men were very badly wounded. Seeing those wounded men gave me an idea. You see, we always carry a first aid kit in the plane. So with a few more pictures, we explained to Tonga that we could be of some help. So we got the kit out and well, we patched up those wounded men. And from then on, the natives were our friends. All oh, they were very grateful. Well, one day Tonga sent for Harper and me to come to his hut. So we went down there. So see ya. Tonga! Tamara! Tamara! Ugmanu! Kalona! Kasai! What is it? Look at this. July 7, 1927. All that Joe has hoped for has come true. Just a little more, and we'll be there, the, the place where the diamond mine will be. There will be a fortune someday for Lita. I should be happy, but something isn't right. I don't know what. Perhaps it's Joe's partner, Harper. Harper. I don't trust him. Or maybe it's just as he says, a case of nerves. Anyway, I'm praying. Hmm. Come on, Mila, una mag. Down, basaco. Mila, una mag. 
Going to let go, she did. Get on board I'm just guessing, Happy, but these people have something to do with Mila. But how did Harper get... Harper! 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 The old boy's blown his tap. He's trying to tell us something about Harper. I've got to find out what. Better make with the pretty pictures, pal. No, not this time. It'll take more than pictures to explain this one. Got any ideas? Yeah. Now, the first thing you're going to do is get that plane fixed. What are you going to be doing? Trying to put two and two together. Tonga and Mila here doing the editing. The next ten days were probably as exciting and exasperating as any I'd ever spent. I didn't see a great deal of Hoppy, but I don't think he was having much fun working his head off getting the plane into shape. But the job had to be done, and if there wasn't sufficient diversion for him, it was just too bad. Strangely enough, though, he didn't complain. Uh, maybe that was because I was too engrossed in my own labors to take notice. My job also took a bit of doing. Teaching English to Mila and Tonga could be a tough job for an expert, but for me, it was practically a career. I tried to think how my fifth grade teacher would do it, and then went full steam ahead. Teaching Mila could hardly be considered work, but uh, within limitations, I really kept my mind on my business. Looking at the English words for flower, beauty she was. And what a weird combination of circumstances must have brought her here to this place. As a matter of fact, I wasn't here because I saw it advertised in a travel folder either. Tonga was a wise old man, and he grasped everything I tried to teach him pretty quick. He was still slightly wary of me, but that was probably shyness. As we proceeded with our work, I would teach him words of violence such as kill, hurt, wound, because I thought that would make it easier for him to fill me in on the story of Harper and Mila and the people in the locket. Only a few more lessons, and I figured Tonga would be ready to clear up the mystery. Well, I was with Mila most of the time, and when she wasn't around, I, I began to miss her. That was a strange feeling for me. I'd never really missed any woman before. I'd search until I found her. Dead, not Vaga. Not Vaga. No. Dead. Kill Snake. Uh, thank you. Well, don't thank me, baby. We're just a good team. <laughs> I'm not the hero type. Uh, hero? No, honey, not me. Look, heroes are born, not made. Me, I'm just an airplane driver. Oh, Mila, that's very pretty. Yes. Pretty. Oh, now, wait a minute, cutie pie. I, I don't even like to wear neckties. Mila Light, good. Blake, good. Oh, no, no, honey. Anybody from Tangier to Cape Town will tell you that Kona I... Kona Samoy. Blake, good. Blake, very good for Mila. Look, honey, I can't take it. I can see you. I can smell these flowers and... Oh, Mila, for the love of mine. <laughs> Well, 
that was it. Up to now, I'd been strictly a kiss and run character. But here I was, falling in love with a girl who couldn't even tell me in English that she was crazy about me. It was as simple as that. And then Hoppy told me that he was getting near the end of his job on a plane, so I had to speed up my lessons. You really taught those people English? Well, just enough to find out what I wanted to know about Mila and Harper. So there was a connection. Yeah, enough to make your hair stand on end. Twenty years ago, Joe Comstock, that's Mila's father, had staked a claim on the spot where the mine is now. Well, he needed an engineer. So Harper seemed to be the best man for the job. Well, that was a mistake. But he took him in as a partner. Who was this Berger? Berger? I don't think he knew anything about engineering. But Harper knew that Berger could be tough in handling the native labor, so he brought him along as sort of a, well, a foreman. But this girl, now, where does I'm she... I'm coming to that. Joe Comstock had decided to settle in the area near the mine. So he took his wife, Mary, and their year-old daughter with him on the trip to the mine site. How are you feeling, dear? Oh, I'll be all right. Uh, another four hours and we'll be there. Mary, you've been swell. You better take care of that matter, Berger. No? Yes, make it short. much to figure out that Harper and Berger had killed the girl's parents so that Harper could get full possession of the diamond mine. Well, why didn't you have the police bring him in? Well, figure it out for yourself. It was the word of an old native against that of Harper, a millionaire with plenty of power. Now, that's why I needed more proof. When I told Hoppy we were going to get that proof, he was almost ready to resign from the firm. Steve, for the love of Pete, have you lost all your marbles? How do you expect to pin a murder rap on Harper? Oh, uh, through Connie, maybe. Yeah, but you told me you were in love with blonde dynamite. Don't strain your ethics, Hoppy. Now, what I mean is, I might be able to trade a little plane ride for a little information, see? Is the uh, crate ready? Yeah, it's ready, but I still don't see what that's got you to will. do. Come on. We've got to see a man about a murder. Let's get out of here. Now, don't you worry about a thing, honey. We'll fix Hopper once and for all. Then I'll be back for you. You come back? Nothing to keep me away, baby. Nothing. What kind of a heel do you think I am? I love you, Mia. This time it's for keeps. I'll be back, I promise. Goodbye, honey. I wasn't kidding. You mean, quote, you lost your heart in the jungle, unquote? <laughs> what I mean is, Hoppy, that I'm really in love with Mila. Now, if you laugh, I'll chop off your arm and hit you over the head with it. Take me back to the department store, Mother, because now I believe in Santa Claus. <laughs> Three weeks gone. Valuable time. And all wasted. Those natives attacked again while you were away. I hired you men because I want a quick action. Sorry, Harper, we couldn't figure on engine trouble. It's a tough break. Yeah, yeah, yes, I suppose so. You didn't see anything in the village at all, eh? Nothing but a bunch of trees, Mr. Harper. Of course, we didn't have much of a chance to look around, but we'll rest up a couple of days and we'll take another stab at A couple of days? Look, Chum, we're tired. It ain't no fun sitting in the jungle for three weeks with nothing but wild animals around. Uh, 
Have you ever had snake meat for lunch? Snake meat? The snake attacked Hoppy. We uh, killed it. That was all the food we had to eat that day. Well, you don't look as though you hadn't eaten regularly. Okay, I'm going up to the mine for a couple of days. There's been some trouble up there. When I come back, you can make another search. Just make sure that nothing happens to your plane this time. Snake meat, yeah. Because Mark's out at the mine? Yeah, it's the evening gown. I haven't seen you in one in five years. Besides, I have to be nice to the boss's wife. And let's see how nice you can be. away from here. I want to get back to the coast. This is the first time I've worn my party clothes since I came to live here. There's just no reason for evening gowns. Meaning, I suppose, that I'm a reason, huh? Yes. And just what do you think your husband would do if you cleared out? I don't know. He'd have to catch me first. You'd give anything to get out of here, wouldn't you, Connie? You're not going to bargain with me about money. No. No, I'd like to get paid off in a little different way. And what's that? Information. Am I supposed to know what that means? You give me the dope I want, we fly to the coast together. Is it a deal? Steve, I don't know what you think you found out, but whatever it is, I don't know a thing. Okay, Cotton. I'll see you in the morning. Just don't start kicking yourself when you realize that you're throwing away your only chance to get out of here. Steve, wait. I knew you were smart, Connie. You never were a girl to pass up a bargain sale. Sometimes I wonder if you are a bargain. And there was enough evidence for me, Connie. There was the locket, the diary, and Tonga's word. But there still wasn't enough evidence for the courts. And you think I can supply proof that Mark killed this jungle girl's parents? That's about the size of it. I'm sorry, I can't. The official story is that the Comstocks were killed by the natives. You don't believe that, Con. Steve, you're out of your mind. This thing can't be proved. Mark's too smart not to burn his bridges behind him. Then you admit there were bridges to burn. You know that Harper did kill the Comstocks. Steve, for heaven's sake, stop questioning me. I tell you it can't be proved. Why stir up trouble? This jungle savage can't mean anything to you. Hey, wait a minute. You're doing this for her. I made a deal with you and I'll stick to it if you don't like it. Oh, Steve, don't go. I can't stay here. I want to go with you. Mila! What? No good! No good! My Omaga! Mila, you fool. You shouldn't have come here. Blake, no good. Me kill! Blake, he no love me. He... You can't get away with this, Blake. What do you bet? What's going on here? Mila was here. She's safe by now. She saw Connie and me together and got jealous. Mila came all the way here? Yeah. Brother, she must have a case on you. That's the way I figure it, Steve. You were just stringing me along, trying to find out what I know. You don't like me now any more than you did five years ago. Should he, my dear? Don't move, Blake. All right, Bergen, take his gun. 
I heard a shot. I just got back from the mine. What's happened? Jungle girl was here. I could have got her, but Blake helped her get away. Oh, so that's it. Take them both inside. I want a word with my wife. All right, Hero. It's my turn now. Inside. Mark, you don't... I heard that. what you said to Blake. You better make your explanations in private. Get about your business, you can. Anything you may say is going to sound rather stupid, Connie. Oh, Mark, please, listen to me. You're still in love with Blake. No. You love Blake and you married me. Mark, please! You still want to make an explanation? No. I don't love Steve Blake, but I hate you. I want to get away from here, and I thought he'd take me. Yeah? Well, maybe you'd like to take this with you. <laughs> Easy, Blake. So you had nothing to eat but snake meat. I wouldn't get too tough if I were you. That with two murders already on your hands. It seems to me you made rather good use of the three weeks you're away. Yeah, and we're gonna see that you hang if it's the last thing we ever do. Keep your mouth shut unless you want me to close it for you. I can do it myself, bud. I've been doing it ever since the day I was born. Coppy's right. We got enough information of that village to have you tried for murder. So? Then perhaps the information in the village should be destroyed. Hey, I get it. That's why they wanted us to find the place. They wanted to knock off the white girl. She might be evidence. Sure. And that's why we're not going to tell them where the village is. Hmm. I think you will. I'll keep him covered, Berger. See if you can persuade our unwilling friends to talk. There's nothing I'd like better. Looks like our willing friend getting ready for the exercise. Whatever happens, Hoppy, don't tell them where that village is. I'm your feet, Blake. I'll give you one more chance to talk before Berger goes to work. That gun doesn't give me much of a chance to fight back, Harper. If that's right, Blake. It's going to be a very uneven contest. I advise you not to resist. I'm really quite a good shot. At this distance, I could give you numerous painful wounds without actually killing you. Oh, now, wait a minute, Harper. For the love of Pete, you can't do this. On the contrary, I shall enjoy it very much until Blake gets some sense. Berger. Don't be a sap, Owen. Now's a good time to change your mind, Blake. Burger's only getting warmed up. Keep pitching, Burger. You're doing fine. Come on, laughing boy. Have fun. Wait a minute. That's enough. Leave him alone. I'll tell you where the village is. Just leave him alone. Yes, you show better sense than your friend, Owens. All right. Draw the route to the village. Well, I, I ain't much good at maps, but, but I'll try. Yeah, how do I know you won't bump us off after I finish this? You don't. But if you want to save your friend from further beating, start drawing. I'm not. I've changed my mind. Ooh, you're overpowering love for me, I suppose. No, just getting sensible, perhaps. Here, I'm the boss's wife. If Sonobi with Blake or anyone else, I'd be nothing. Yes, you don't like the idea of going back and being nothing. That's right. Now you know how I feel. If you want me to stay on those terms, I'll stay. Well, I suppose I'm a fool, but I want you even on those terms. What about him? He's my concern from here in. Better go now, honey. Listen, Harper, I don't trust her. She's been nothing but trouble since she arrived. She's my wife. 
If you don't like things the way they are, get out. Take it easy. I'm just telling you. You take care of your business, I'll take care of mine. Have you finished? Well, it isn't much, but I guess it'll get you there. Okay, Owens. I hope for your sake it's all right. Take him downstairs. What do you mean, downstairs? Where are you taking us? In this part of the country, I'm the law. I'm prepared for all emergencies, such as rebellious workmen. Oh, a jail, huh? You don't miss any bets, do you, Mr. Harper? No, I try not to. You better give Blake a hand. Come on, Blake. They're giving us a private room with a bar. In fact, lots of bars. Well, a nice, cozy little rat hole. I bet your workmen love it down here. They don't usually break the law again after having been here, if that's what you mean. Break the law? Something like asking for a raise, maybe. You know, but you talk too much. <laughs> I found out that's the only way I can say anything. Special customers, Stone. Just see to it that they don't pull any fast ones. Don't worry. They won't try anything. But according to Owen's map, the trip should take two days going, two days coming. You got enough food for six days? Sufficient ammunition? You're really going to do a thorough job of it, aren't you, Mark? Well, why not? I have every right to protect my interests. Yes. I suppose you'll feel much safer with that jungle girl dead. You're drinking too much, Connie. Am I? Just celebrating our reunion. To the Harper Millions, may they rest easy on your conscience. You be smart and watch your tongue. <laughs> If you're ready, let's go. Sleep. Worrying about me ain't gonna do any good. I've got to warn her somehow, Hoppy. I can't just let Hopper kill her. Yeah, it doesn't seem like there's much we can do about it. Oh, it's you, Mrs. Hopper. Hi, Stoney. I got lonesome upstairs. Oh, talk to Stoney. Stoney's my pal. You ain't never said more than ten words to me, Mrs. Hopper. But that doesn't mean I haven't noticed you, Stoney. As a matter of fact, I think you're cute. I've always thought you were cute. But you didn't even know I was around. Holy smoke, she go for anybody. Quiet, are they quiet? Hey, look. My two pals. How are they doing, Stoney? You better take it easy, Mrs. Hopper. You've been hitting the bottle. Oh, it's a vicious circle, Stoney. My husband hits me. And I hit the bottle. Gotta get a little fun someplace, huh, Stoney? Here, Steve. One sound and you're minus your head. Don't, don't kill me. Get the key, Connie. You'll see I get back to the coast, Steve. I'll see you get there if I have to carry on my back. I'm going back to the good old USA where the only diamonds I want to see will be in the store windows. Now you're talking. All right, you can let go of him. I got him covered. I'll take care of this character, Hoppy. You warm up the plane. We've got to get the Mila in a hurry. Right. You better come along, Connie. This may mean trouble for you. You finish your job and come back for me. I'll be able to handle things until then. You're sure? Yes. In you go, Stoney. What is it, Connie? Well, Mark and Berger have always been worried about what happened to the Comstock bodies. According to their story, they ran off after the natives attacked. But I've overheard them many times discussing where the bodies could be. And I know they've searched. The bodies, huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So long, wonderful. Oh, well, Connie, you sure you'll be all right here? Sure. Stone can yell his head off and nobody will hear him. Good. I'll see you later. Good luck. Do 
when we get there, Steve. That's the $2,500 question. Yeah, and you can bet it all that Mila won't be waiting with open arms or a home-cooked meal. <laughs> and after we get that little matter wrapped up, we're going to have to start planning a little entertainment for Harper and Company. They're expected, you know. Everything is nicely arranged for them. You know, we're going to have a rough time with that arsenal and Harper's got... Strategy, Hoppy, strategy. Use your brains. What good are our brains going to do with a couple of bullets in them? Well, you just keep your brains out of the way. Do you hear a plane? Yeah. You don't suppose that's Blake? Stone's pretty handy with that gun. Might be armored planes. Yeah. I guess you're right. Blake, come back. Vaga. Blake, talk. Say much. Maybe. Good. Maga, Kenome, Saloe. Blake, hot woman. No good. Baga. Pictures, pal. They don't seem so glad to see us. Mila, I've got a lot to explain. Blake, no good. Now you got to explain what explain means. Tonga, much trouble. Harper, many men, guns. They come kill Mila. Varga. Harper, kill. Blake, come help. Blake, help. I've got a few ideas. Adonega, please come. Um, we've got a lot to talk over, honey. Too deserted. You suppose it could be a trap? What trap? What could they do against our guns? Yeah, they should know better by this time. Uh, they've probably spotted us and taken to the hills. Let's take a look. Hey, this is giving me the creeps. Well, it certainly can't be here. Are we here a kid cry or a dog bark or something? Take a look at those huts. No one there, not even their belongings. Same over here. Well, just as I thought, they've all cleared out. You thought wrong, Harper. Blake! You're completely surrounded, Harper. The first man who tries something gets it. Now, don't be a fool, Blake. You can't do anything against our gun. No! I'm sorry that happened, Harper, but these natives mean business. Now, drop your guns. Hold on to your guns, man. You'll all be murdered if you don't. I ain't gonna fight something I can't see. I've got this gun aimed right at your head, Harper. I'll give you three. One. Two. That's better. You boys can sit back and relax now. Our business is with Harper and Berger, not you. You keep your heads and nobody will get hurt. Nice seeing you at this end of a gun, Harper. Do you mind telling me how you got out of that cell? We played gin rummy with a guard and won the keys. I'll find out sooner or later. It'll have to be a lot later. I'm taking you two to Sunobi. Sunobi. What for? The murder of this girl's parents, Joe and Mary Comstock. No, you don't. You ain't hanging that all us. Burger. They've got no proof. We'll let the Sunobi police decide that. They ain't decide nothing. Not for me, they ain't. Burger. Well, what if there is proof? What if they find our guns or something? They now, hang on. They're not taking me. Well, there it is. Harper had enough influence to switch the troop and have Mila arrested for killing Berger. Mm, I see. So you laid charges against Harper and had him held for questioning on the murder of the Comstocks. Mm, there's only one thing that'll get Mila free, Mr. Bennett, and that's the proof of Harper's guilt. Is there such proof? We'll know pretty soon. The police should be back in the interior by now. 
If they found what I sent them for, Mila will go free. If they don't, Harper will walk out of that door across the street. Good heavens, Mr. Blake, you can't settle things this way. One murder won't solve another. Don't try to stop me, Bennett. The door's opening. Be careful, Mr. Blake. It might be a stranger. It's Harper! Good heavens, what happened? You didn't shoot. No. I guess your boat got him, Inspector. He knew he'd never beat a trial. No one's ever escaped this fish yet. Perhaps someone should have told him. What's happened? <clears throat> your plan worked, Blake. We found the graves at Comstock with these slugs in their skulls. You were smart not to have opened those graves yourself. You'd have ruined the only evidence we have. I'm afraid I don't understand, Mr. Blake. It's very simple, Mr. Bennett. Harper claimed that the Comstocks were killed by the natives. Well, savages in the jungle don't carry 38s. Quite a story. Quite a story. But I'm afraid my wife will never believe it. Well, goodbye, sir. Good luck. Thank you. Blake! You come to help. Oh, Mila, honey. Break it up, will you, Steve? My arms are getting tired. <laughs> Thanks, Steve. That's one of the best goodbyes I've ever tasted. Well, lots of luck, honey. You're a real pal. Keep a sharp eye on him, honey. Steve may be okay, but no man should be trusted any further than he can throw a diamond mine. Me no trust. Me love. Come here. Okay, Sir Walter Wally. Let's go. At your service, my lady. Honey, someday when you're a real lady, we'll visit Connie in Brooklyn. Me, lady, now. Yes, Mrs. Blake. I guess you are. <laughs> <laughs>